Selling online is a huge marketplace. Last year, worldwide, over $5 trillion changed hands. But that does mean that everyone's gonna succeed at it. In fact, if you sell on eBay, chances are your business is gonna fail. I know it's hard to hear, but most people who sell online as a side hustle or a full-time gig are not making a full-time income. And for the sake of this video, we'll call it 60 grand a year. I know it isn't like a huge amount of money, but I think for a lot of people, that's enough to give them a solid footing. Uh, and the reason they can't get that is not because there aren't good things in their area. I know everyone always says, oh, my area has garbage. I can't source stuff to make money. But the reality is that's simply not true. True. I'm going to break down what I do in my business, and by no means am I the biggest eBay seller, am I the most profitable eBay seller, but I do have a system that allows me to find inventory from anywhere in the country, get it in my warehouse, list it, organize it, and ship it out, uh, and maintain one day handling time, 100% customer feedback, and making more than $1,000 a week. And I haven't bought inventory since December of last year, if you can believe that. Now I know you're thinking, oh, this is one of those videos where he just talks about general platitudes, and I promise you, no. I will give you specific examples of what I do and what you can do to make money online. But first, again, I'm Blake. Thanks for watching. Please give it a thumbs up. Helps out so much on videos like this when there's just the market is totally saturated with, frankly, a lot of really bad advice. So the first reason that I think everyone totally fails at reselling is they have no strategy. By which I mean they go out, they see what they like, they buy it, they try and sell it online, and they're not even going as far as to scan the item or look up keywords or the exact item on eBay and see if there are sold listings. Now there's tiers to this, right? The most basic beginner novice resellers are just buying and selling and they have no clue at all about what they're doing. But even people who are looking up keywords and prices, they are still missing out on a huge uh, part of the business because I know that everyone thinks, oh, eBay is just buying things for cheap and selling them for more. And up to about probably maybe 200 items. Yeah, exactly. That's all it is. But if you want to go at scale, I mean, right now, we have 368 boxes, bankers boxes, like you see, you know, all around the warehouse, uh, and $145,000 of inventory listed. That's quite a bit of stuff, uh, and it's not all things that are going to sell overnight. And in order to organize this and maintain this, I have to have a system in place. Now, there are only a few aspects of any system that make it a system. You don't have to copy and paste what I'm doing, but what you do have to have is replicable processes and systems that you can take anything that you're sourcing, put into, and make more money with. I'll give my store as an example. I don't buy anything that I can't fit into a banker's box or is going to break in shipping. If you go in my store and you see, oh, well, here's some glass stuff, here's some pottery, that's those were mistakes. Those are old buys. You can learn from the bad things I did and not do them yourself. I haven't bought anything in about a year now that doesn't fit into a, a banker's box that's going to break if I ship it anything besides one of these uh, six by nine padded mailers um, and is not going to fit into the, my, my system. If it doesn't fit into the system, it has to be <laughs> very tantalizing because uh, the friction associated with changing how I store things, with changing how I ship things, with changing how I test things is very rarely worth it. Now, I'm not going to say this is the way for everyone, right? There's some people around the country who drive around to thrift stores and buy enormous giant things and ship them out or have local deals or have buyers buying CPAP machines, all stuff like that. And my point here is not to say that what they're doing is wrong, but they too have systems in place. They have ways to get inventory, to store it, and to move it. I guess they're a bit more clever than I am uh, in the sense that I have to do small, tiny, dinky little stuff, but you get the point, right? It has to be systematized and replicable. The second thing they're doing that's making them fail is they don't have the discipline. And when I say they don't have the discipline, it's not like a binary thing. Like you're not magically one day disciplined enough to run your own business. It's a gradual process where you slowly build up this self-discipline, this respect for yourself, this belief in your abilities to do these things, and you can stick to them. A problem I've had over the years is I'm always chasing the next shiny object. It's a terrible, terrible thing. It's like being a raven seeing nickels on the street. 
Uh, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is have belief in the system you're doing, trust it, believe it, and you just stick to that and you go through that. Now, when I stopped buying inventory for about three weeks, I was mortified that I was losing out on good deals and I was going to go bankrupt uh, and it was just going to be the absolute worst thing in the world. I mean, and I'm thinking all of this stuff while I have a warehouse that I, of things I already bought just sitting here. And it really all kind of did boil down to not having the self-discipline to sit down, go through my old inventory, and really have the faith in the decisions I made in years past, uh, have the faith that those decisions were the right decision, and that if I just worked the right way, tweaked them a little bit, I could make money off of those. Now, my revenue is down about, let's see, 20% since my last big month of buying, but it's been six months. It's been six months and I'm not really worried about it because I'm still seeing over $10,000 a month in sales. And as long as I can do that on eBay, everything on Amazon, everything off YouTube, off uh, Patreon, off Gumroad, that's just gravy on top. And it really all does boil down to one, like I said, the system I have, and two, the faith and the belief in that system. And the third thing is a bit more abstract and it's fighting burnout. How do you fight burnout? This is far more subjective. All I can do is uh, to tell you that you have to really believe in the things you're doing and enjoy them. And you have to have this kind of mental stimulation. Maybe it's finding new ways to source inventory. Maybe it's optimizing your inventory process. Maybe it's launching new products in the background of your, uh, of your existing business. If you can't tell, those are all things that I do. But I think that constant mental stimulation has really saved me from getting burnt out. It's a huge problem amongst people who are self-employed, amongst people who do it as a side hustle, anyone who has this kind of a solopreneur business, and by solopreneur, I mean I'm the only person doing this with the exception of occasional help I might get from my family or virtual assistants I hire for ad hoc tasks. Like, I've done it for listing, I've done it for sourcing, but on the most, for the most part, uh, it's me coming in this building for between eight, you know, four and eight hours a day, sometimes longer, but generally that's what I'm spending in this building uh, alone and just putting my nose to the grindstone and working. Now, if you have a system, if you can stick to it, and if you can find some way to do both those things in a, a mentally stimulating way, I really do believe that you're gonna have a lot of success as a reseller. Now, what I want you to do next, after understanding all of this and listening to all of this, is go to the comments below and tell me what you're thinking about. What's your system? How are you gonna stick to it? What ways can you find this engaging and interesting? And hopefully, if all goes well, we can do a little bit of brainstorming and some feedback because I do love to hear what you guys are working on. It helps me understand the niche better and the community better. And I think there are so many people down there just raring to go to give you constructive, and guys, keep it constructive and helpful feedback. Again, I'm Blake. Thank you for watching. Hope this offered some insight. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.